alcohol ink art. Transforming, translucent, evolving, simply beautiful. Explore making art with alcohol ink. Hi there, this is Cheryl Johnson from Art Lessons Now and this is Jim Wilde. And Jim is my nephew and we both are painters as well as having our Art Lessons Now class. And we wanted to share with you a new process that we're really excited about. We got some alcohol inks and we're going to share eight different lessons. And we're going to be offering those lessons to you on Art Lessons Now. Uh, Jim is going to be talking to you about what he's doing on his lessons. Uh, I'm going to present to you a way of using store-bought canvas to make your own uh, canvas and using kilts as a gesso to prepare it and I'll show you how I uh, apply alcohol inks and do my painting. Okay. Now Jim, did you use, um, uh, what kind of canvas? Did you use a drop cloth or what kind of canvas did you use? Uh, yes, actually I went to uh, my local uh, Harbor Freight, sorry, couldn't remember the name of this place, Harbor Freight and picked up some drop cloths they had on sale and uh, they were like five bucks a piece and I was able to turn it into multiple canvases and uh, using some kilts primer and uh, a little uh, limestone powder, marble powder, and made a great canvas. And why did you use limestone powder? Uh, it thickens the uh, the primer a little bit mm -hmm. and it turns it into more of a, uh, a smooth uh, surface for the uh, alcohol ink store done. Yeah, the alcohol inks have to be done on a smooth surface and we'll be teaching you about that in there. We'll be demonstrating my technique. This ended up as my painting which I also added some different medias to it. I don't know if Jim did on his, he'll have to tell you that in the video. Uh, but this is the finished painting that I did with alcohol ink and then I added some latex and acrylic. So alcohol inks are really exciting and fun to use and they're a whole different process and you can get some exciting colors. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be sharing with you pieces from each of the lessons and we hope you go out to Art Lessons now and purchase that class. Uh, there are going to be eight different lessons included and it's going to be a lot of fun for you. So we hope you enjoy the pieces of snippets that we're going to share with you so you can get excited about alcohol inks and that you can give it a try for yourself. So what did you like about alcohol inks, Jim? Uh, I like the fluidity, uh, the way of the blend and layering of it and uh, just the, the final outlook of it. Yeah, I love the pure pigment bright colors and the way they mix together and that you could control it. So there's a lot to explore in alcohol inks and we hope that you take the time to go to Jim's site, which is, what site is it? jwildman.com And mine is Cheryl Johnson, artist.com and then our artlessonsnow.com. Boy, so many. And we hope you go to Facebook and join our Art Lessons Now group and uh, submit your uh, alcohol ink paintings. We're just starting the group and we're getting it set up and we know that it's so important to be artists with the community and we'll share with you back and forth and other people have an opportunity and other artists to submit their work. So it's really exciting. So we encourage you to uh, participate and get out some alcohol inks. They're not very expensive and it's a really fun way to paint and we'll share with you the surfaces we painted on and we really look forward to sharing with you our eight different lessons. So this is Cheryl Johnson. Jim Wildman. For ArtLessonsNow.com. Please have more joy every day as you pursue your passions. Alcohol Ink Art. Transforming. Wonderful what this is going to do and you're going to be so excited. Now, Jim, what's your favorite color? Blue. Blue. I can always guarantee Jim's favorite color is blue. So I am going to start out for Jim with blue. I just poured a little alcohol ink in there. Okay. Now, woo, you see that? That is simply the ink going into the alcohol. Now watch this. With the little Giotto, I can make this wonderful little movements and I can move this around and get beautiful, beautiful pattern. Alcohol, egg, art. Would this media be nice to be applied?
applied over a different type of medium, like an acrylic or an oil or a latex? Well, you can do that, but um, it's expensive, and alcohol is a different solvent. It's alcohol. It's not like mineral spirits. And if you're going to do it, I would do it last and let it flow. And hey, I believe in experimenting. Remember when I was in Hawaii? If you haven't watched that video, go watch it. And oh yeah, buy our classes, artlessnow.com. Well, I have a surprise for you that is very unusual in alcohol inks. It's white. The power of white is really interesting, and I wanted to make sure you saw that before I ended this video. It's really exciting to play and add colors freely. The white works perfectly. It really makes unusual shapes. They look almost like little expanding uh, plants or seeds or amoeba. Simply apply the uh, white alcohol ink on your surface. If the alcohol below is wet, it will expand. If it is dry, it will simply make a dot or a shape. When alcohol is wet, it will expand. When alcohol is dry, it will create shapes or drops. Now that I look at it, the alcohol ink patterns kind of look like the coronavirus. Wow, I'd rather make them than have it. Let's look at that closely. Well, during this lockdown of the coronavirus, I'm encouraging you to stay home and be safe and make sure you wear your masks. I mean, it's important to wear your masks and to practice social distancing. The coronavirus is called corona because when you look at it under a microscope, it has kind of a crown and projects out like little projectiles and you can see actual little crowns. So this uh, video is about alcohol inks and I want you to play with it rather than go out into contact with people. The virus is spreading and we have to be so careful. So I hope that you spend your time more productively and the closest that you get to any kind of virus is by painting little amoebas or little shapes or colors that give you pleasure instead of giving you illness. So please be careful out there. I am so concerned about my friends and my family and I am very sorry for the tremendous loss of life and it's not something to play with. Anyone can get it. And you need to focus more on health and safety. So please practice social distancing and wear your mask and enjoy painting and staying in and filling your time with great things where you can be creative and create wonderful art instead of being exposed to the virus. Get your vaccine. I had my shot. Have you had yours? Let's continue with alcohol ink. Alcohol ink art. Transforming. Translucent. Evolving. Simply beautiful. Explore making art with alcohol ink. Alcohol inks have very high pigment content, so make sure you wear your gloves or they'll stain your fingers. Great trick for getting the fingers out of your gloves. So make sure you wear your gloves so that you don't get it all over your hands. Notice the wonderful, wonderful uh, shapes and areas of color you can create. Well, I'm gonna add my final uh, black to create a very high value. I suggest putting on your lighter colors first and then start adding your darker ones as you increase the values. Don't forget to add your isopropyl um, alcohol. It really is the best. Okay, it's that time again. Get out your supplies, your alcohol, and get some other things, acrylics and latex and chalk paint, anything to play with. Let's have fun. <laughs> well, there we have the um, stone paper up on the easel, and we can look at it, and then it'll allow me to take a picture.
of it in black and white, and I can decide if I'm happy with it or if I want to change it. Remember, it's your painting, and you can do anything you want. You can have, uh, you can add things, you can subtract things. It's all about you enjoying and creating art. You can't create these special effects much better than with alcohol ink. But you can combine acrylics and latex and other mediums with it. And that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to get out my white paint and um, I call it Fred and uh, do just some additions to this so I can really make this painting my own. Okay, here we are at the end of the painting and I've gotten out Fred. I call this little, um, it's actually a uh, a handy uh, painter edger that you can use to trim or edge the walls. It's kind of like a cloth thing. You can get it at your hardware stores. Um, and it's, this one happens to be by Sherline. And then I'm going to get some white paint. This happens to be chalk paint. You can mix media with this, remember. It's been a wonderful adventure for me, and I'm really looking forward now to seeing Jim's videos. He's going to do one on how to prepare canvas. He's also uh, created a couple of uh, alcohol ink paintings, so there's a lot to see. I know you're really going to enjoy seeing Jim demonstrate his tips and also see his art. He does art completely different than I do. He has wonderful choices of colors. He's doing a proprietary technique that you'll want to see that is really a wonderful way to uh, block lines. I don't know if he's going to share how to do that or not, but boy, is it nice. And he's ended up with some absolutely incredible, beautiful results. The ink is flowing, the area is blocked off, the colors are dynamic. So make sure you advance to see Jim's paintings. Jim Wildman will share his tips for using kilns as a primer instead of gesso on a cloth canvas. Good afternoon. This is Jim with Art Lessons Now with our Master's Art Class tip. Uh, I'm going to prepare this canvas. This is just a typical 3 8 inch canvas, half inch canvas, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I want to use it for acrylic ink. And with acrylic ink, you want a pretty smooth surface so that the paint will, will run and bleed easier. So the way I like to prepare it is I'll use uh, kilts number two. This is a water-based uh, primer you can get from your local hardware, uh, Home Depot, etc. And I'll use just a uh, a small 3 8 snap roller. Uh, I look for the one that's smooth or extra smooth. And I found the easiest way to do this is just take the roller and dip it straight into the paint. Uh, you can control how much paint you get on there and you don't have a lot of extra uh, cleanup and other things you have to deal with, just your brush. And so I'll, I'll dip it in the paint and then I'll apply it to the, the canvas. And when I'm applying it to the canvas, I don't want it really thick. So I will put it on here and I'll start working it back and forth uh, so that I don't get a very thick consistency. Uh, the thicker it is, the more bumps you'll have initially. Uh Jim Wildman will now share his tips for preparing drop cloth canvas. Artists are always looking for ways to save money. Jim came up with a wonderful idea of creating a canvas using drop cloths and gessoing with kilns as a primer. Great idea, Jim. Hi, this is Jim Wildman in Claremore, Oklahoma uh, with Art Lessons Now, Master Art Class. And I'm here today with a, a set of tools, tips, and tricks video for you that I thought might be helpful to some of you artists. Uh, I went down to my local uh, Harbor Freight. Uh, you can get them at Lowe's and you can get them at Home Depot also. But uh, I picked up these uh, 4x12 uh, canvas drop cloths and this is a number, a, a, a 10 ounce canvas uh, drop cloth. And it's got a real nice tight weave. Uh, it's only got a few little fur balls on there that you can easily pick off. And what I did 
here is I took this four by 12 and I measured off 36 inches and I cut it off and that's what I've got here on my table. And using this one tarp, I can get, uh, I can get four 36 by 48 canvases. And that leaves me enough to stretch and everything also. Uh, what I also did is I just took this piece of canvas and I laid it out on a flat table and uh, I used these spring clamps to help hold it tight and to pull it taut. Uh, you don't have to do that. Uh, it just makes it easier when you go to primering it to have it hold in place that so doesn't move around on you. And when you get these tarps, you'll see that they're, they're kind of uh, wrinkled and stuff. Uh, I'm going to use my uh, steamer and steam this. You can also easily use your iron with a steam setting. And I'm just going to steam this and work the wrinkles out. And then once that's dried, I'm going to come back and primer this canvas and get, so I can use it for my art. So, uh, like I said, all I did is stretch this out and then I'm going to apply the, the steamer and uh, get this nice and cleaned up. <laughs> We also are going to offer kits in the future uh, of our Magnus frames and stretchers that uh, will come in a kit where you can have it uh, ready to be stretched. You can stretch it, use it, paint it, and then uh, undo it without having to pull staples and uh, ship it off that way. And uh, it's another way to present and send off the uh, canvas to your clients. But I'm going to go ahead and finish steaming this and we'll go from here. Welcome, this is Jim Wildman. I'm going to share my process for alcohol ink. Let's ink and have some fun. I use a blower to move the ink more quickly. I keep my ink in a small squeeze bottle to control it. Ink dries quickly. Add more ink or alcohol as you need it. I am going to refine a few areas. Let's see the details up close. The layers are great. Check value is so important. I hope you have enjoyed this demonstration. Get out your inks and enjoy and give it a try. This is Jim Wildman and Dusty. Have a great day and God bless. Well, this concludes quick snippets from our eight lessons. Please go to our master art class on Art Lessons Now and see both Jim's and my lessons. We encourage you to check out the different lessons and particularly look for Alcohol Inc. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Thank you so much and have a great day.